Well, hello, Crime Stoppers. My, oh my, I made a uh, long video, but then I did not uh, post it because, and it turns out it's a good thing I didn't because the information in there, a lot of it turned out to be wrong in like two days. <laughs> Things are happening rather rapidly. Um, pay attention because you might miss something. I'll tell you what, there is, uh, I don't even know where to begin ranting. <laughs> I can start wherever you want. Um, no collusion. Um, how can there be obstruction of justice if there was no collusion? Captain Obvious is stating the obvious about, gee, I think there was spying. <laughs> really? <laughs> Meantime, the Democrats are like, how could you say such a thing? Uh, because there was spying. Um, yeah, these people are going to jail. And uh, some of them are going to hang. And uh, we're starting to see child trafficking. This is more than most of you people can handle. Um, but the child trafficking is coming to the surface. The next VM, uh, people are pleading guilty, and they better not get slaps on the wrist. Or prosecutors and uh, defendants alike are going to find out the wrath of the American people is nothing to be trifled with. Um, I went to a party actually dressed like this the other day. That was pretty amusing. Um, hippies, mostly hippies, and uh, after they got over their initial initial shock and dismay, <laughs> I did some healing. Uh, brought them water kefir. And uh, a good time was had by all. Um, anyway, the point being is that uh, maybe you don't judge a book by its cover because there are quite a few of the black hats that um, want to be white hats. Uh, they're white hat wannabes. Uh, they turn out to be gray hats because they have done horrible things. Or um, maybe they have not participated in the horror, but they just looked the other way while it was going on um, because they like their paycheck better than they like... Um, the side of good um, and the truth are uh, pretty easy. And in, th in this case, this is one of the easiest cases you're ever going to get when it comes to um, being able to figure out who's who and what's what. Um, on the right-hand path, uh, we have those who protect and nurture children. On the left-hand path, we have those who rape children. Um, I don't think this is a hard choice for you guys to make. <laughs> I don't understand why it's even an issue. Um, but the baby rapers are raping children, and they have conditioned you into thinking that, you know, cute girls like Alice and Mac are not pure evil. They look like the queen in the, in the, um, Snow White, or in, uh, shoot, I can't remember the other one, where she's got the horns. Maleficent. Um, right? Those are the evil ones. The good ones are blonde and blue-eyed and pretty and smiling, and no, they knew those children were going to be raped. And see, calling it kitty porn, um... The children bleed and scream and cry, and it's horrifying, and uh, that's kitty porn. Um, and people that like kitty porn need killing. Simple as that. Um, it's not a preference. It's not a. It's it's just. It's a disease, and you guys need to be stamped out. Um, simple as that. And none of you, none of you, are going to go to prison for uh, killing a baby raper. Uh, but you better know it's a baby raper, right? You better not just accuse and uh, then uh, find out. Oops, uh, right? Um, but if that's a person that's raping children, uh, babies, three, four, five-year-olds, depending on preference, some of these sick fucks, they prefer uh, baby babies. Others of them like little toddlers. Others of them like, you know, going all the way up. Their sick preference all the way up. 12-year-old uh, boys. Um, some of them like, t you know, young, young teenage girls, like 13. Um, it's, uh, it's not right. And... Uh, it needs to be put to an end. And this, my friends, is why you have such wild hysteria coming from the Democrats and coming from the mainstream media, who is absolutely complicit in covering this up. Um, Siebel Edmonds told you in no uncertain terms that uh, ain't no clean judges. <laughs> right? If they're clean, they don't want them because you can't blackmail those guys. Same thing with politicians. Same thing with politicians at the state, uh, federal, local level. If they're clean... They cannot be told what to do. Now, not all of them, but many of them. Enough of them, like I said, sheep herders. Enough of them to uh, control the sheep. Right? You don't need thousands. You just need a few in uh, important places. And then uh, those can uh, monitor others that might be um, on the trail of pedophiles or those who do dastardly deeds. And uh, either tell them to back off or get rid of them or, or, or. Right? You have no idea how dirty and underhanded this whole thing is. Also, understand this. Uh, 
See, it's bad news, and then more bad news, and then more bad news. Don't look at it as bad news. Look at it as a 27-year head start. Um, two things have come to my attention, and both of them have to deal with uh, decoding and the numbers game. Uh, Gematria um, is going to be fun. Here's a prediction. Tiger Woods wins. That's <laughs> pretty clear. Uh, he's going to do a Grand Slam. Uh, I believe the odds are 100 to 1. Uh, mosey on down to Vegas and uh, put 50 bucks there and uh, go collect $50,000. Um, or excuse me, um, what? No, 100 to 1. So $5,000. It's not 1,000 to 1. It's only 100 to 1 odds. So um, the chance of him winning, winning, winning the next two uh, Masters is uh, with the British Open and the PGA. Mm, I believe they put the odds at 100 to 1. And it was 500 to 1 that he would win all four. And I know people that just put down five bucks and then they'll win $2,500. Um, this is the year, kids. This has all been preordained. This is all part of the soup that, uh, the bitter, bitter soup that you get to drink. Tiger is part of the deal. Um, I hate to say it. Um, I don't know about the part where is he, in fact, uh, raping children. Don't know about that part. Probably knows about it. Probably has been to, um, parties where this was the case. May have a control file. Uh, his thing was women, right? He liked women. Um like we all do, but uh, he got shamed, and, uh, you know, because he's part of the club, so he had to take a beating, and now they're getting, now that he's taken his beating, uh, and done his part to make it look like black men are unfaithful, and blah, 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 and they can't control their urges, and blah, 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 blah. give him some money, and uh, this is what happens, um, he will be rewarded for his part, uh, although his price is heavy, 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 um, Let's see here. Next VM is nothing compared to Rachel Chandler, child handler Rachel Chandler. Um, these beautiful blonde women are going to hang. Um, and if they don't hang, uh, the people that refuse to hang them are going to hang. Um, you don't even seem to understand the amount of... Uh, it's boiling over under the surface, and they know it. right? Um, see, a lot of those guys blinded themselves, uh, YouTube and other uh, social media, because they blinded their own web crawlers. They blinded their own um, most probable outcome uh, software because they silenced guys like me. Actually, my channel, uh, I've only had a couple things removed. But overall, many people, as you know, have been silenced on social media. So they're not getting the full story. So their most probable outcome algorithms are off uh, because they blinded themselves <laughs> because they keep... If you're on Twitter, for example, and you are a Trump supporter, or you know about the child trafficking, or, 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 um, they're not letting you speak, they're not letting you tweet, they're killing your accounts. So it skews their own algorithms, excuse their own uh, outcomes, because they don't realize how many people there are that have woken up. They think that the ability to uh, keep us quiet and keep you silent uh, equals the ability to, but that's not the case. People are talking to each other. I've been to parties. I've been I've been to some interesting parties where in uh, interesting people saying interesting things. People that I would not expect to be aware, um, but people are waking up to the fact that uh, no, uh, child trafficking is a problem. And uh, you know, if you do the math once again, there is billions of us on the planet. And let's say they take sixty five thousand black women, children, uh, young girls a year. Uh, do the math on that. I mean, it's a very infinitesimally small percentage of the entire world population that they're harvesting. Um, same thing, if they would get 500,000 people across the United States, I don't know what the number is. Um, but even then, as a proportion or a percentage of the population, which is over 325 million, 500,000, that's like, you're not missing uh, one in 600 Right? So, um, gee, what happened to so-and-so? Gee, uh, so-and-so's kid got kidnapped. That's too bad. Um, right? But you don't, it's not enough that most people are even aware how huge the problem is. Hundreds of thousands. Now, if it's hundreds of thousands just here in the United States, again, uh, it took me a long time to wake up to the fact that that means there's infrastructure. That means there's got to be a way to procure these kids. That means that there's a market for these kids. And that means that there's got to be a way to dispose of these kids after they get done with them. And, of course, they make as much money as possible during the process, um, wherein they sell these children to these six fucks, and then uh, these guys turn around and harvest their organs when they're done with them. And by done, I mean have raped them to death. 
um, and extracted adrenochrome and, 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 oh, the, the horrifying things they do. And then uh, it's coming into the consciousness that um, if they could clone Dolly the Sheep way back in 1994, and they have told you in no uncertain terms in certain movies that the cloning thing is happening, and then uh, they're playing with clones and then, uh, you know, hack off a body part and put a bionic arm on there, or maybe legs, or, 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 um, or you know, clone the, the, and do crazy experiments where you just take the head and then put it on a life support system that's a robot. I mean, they're doing insane things behind the scenes, my friends. Um, if you can think of it, they're doing it. Um, and perhaps not inside the borders of the United States, perhaps inside the borders of the United States, but um, definitely around the world, there are uh, people experimenting um, and not in the best way possible. Um, the idea being is that uh, if you can imagine it, it's probably happening, and much, much worse. Uh, hate to be the bearer of bad news. Okay, um, speaking of, like I said, it's just sick and wrong, and ugh, you just throw up a little bit in your mouth. Uh, but you need to be aware of it, and you need to put it to an end. Um, and you have to not be afraid of these people. That's the one thing they count on, that you'll be afraid. Once you get past your fear, um, maybe you turn the tables on them and make them afraid of you. Uh, in large numbers, they are afraid of you. One at a time, they have no fear. They laugh at you um, because they know they can send uh, four or five guys. And see, this is the thing with humans. Um, you can pay anybody to do anything, including the research I was just talking about, but also just, um, uh, and it should uh, uh, annoy you, but it works both ways um, and disturb you that uh, there are men that if you give them Babylonian money magic, and they, these guys print as much as they want. They can make it, they literally make it out of thin air. So let's say they want to give uh, Joe Schlo murderer guy a um, million dollars. They just print it. I mean, it's not hard. Um, and then they tell Joe Schlo to go kill so-and-so's children. They'll, there's a guy on the planet that'll do it for a million dollars. I don't care how sweet the child is. I don't care how well-connected the family is. Um, and everybody knows that this is the case. They, find, I mean, um, the, the guys that murdered Kennedy got bragging rights in the assassin community. Um, Particularly because the American people were so, oh, that was just sad, um, easily led astray that, oh, no, there was no conspiracy theory here and the single bullet theory and just nonsense. And now all those guys are old or dead and got away with it. Um, but the plan that was put in place, or those that realized what was going on, the coup that happened on that day, um, and many people have figured it out, go look at some old Bill Hicks uh, uh, comedy, if you can call it that, because <laughs> um, you got to laugh. But I mean, Bill Hicks was uh, well ahead of his time um, realizing some of these things were going on. Um, the idea being that um, if you look at some of his comedy, he talks about the fact that, uh, no, this was a coup, and um, there were quite a few people that were disturbed by the coup, and um, it's been 40, 50 years. These men are old men now but they have been plotting their revenge and uh, have told their children and their children, some of these guys got grandchildren that are in the fight. Um, Trump, Trump is not just by accident. He didn't just Johnny come lately. They didn't just, you know, they're not just shooting from the hip, although that's what they're trying to make you feel like it is as they send the Democrats into trap after trap after trap. Um, but these traffickers are going to go down. But make no mistake, Trump is not your friend. Trump is the friend of billionaires. Trump is part of the alliance, which is part of the cabal. It's the same bird. Two uh, wings, same bird. The cabal and the alliance, uh, ain't no good guys in this fight. Right? You've got guys that are better. <laughs> guys that, you know, they just bomb children and sell heroin. They don't uh, actually rape children and uh, force the heroin into them. Um, but, the, you know, and a lot of these guys, like I said, a lot of these black hats, a lot of these bad guys, they want to be good guys because they don't want to be involved with the rape of children and uh, child trafficking and human trafficking anymore. And they actually are sorry for some of the things that they have been a part of. And they want to make amends before they get dead uh, because we're all going to get dead eventually. And uh, they know that um, what they've done in this part of the simulation is um, going to be... Uh, instrumental in how they can place themselves in the next part of the simulation. And once again, simulation, not the best word, but um, take a look at Gemantria and take a look at a few other things and you'll realize that um, here's the simulation that you've placed yourself in. 
Um, demons have taken over the world. Um, what do you do? <laughs> you have been indoctrinated. Uh, generally speaking, you've been indoctrinated for 12 years by the same demons that have taken over. Um, but somehow you've woken up to the fact that um, demons have taken over. Um, they don't look like the demons that you thought they were. They don't have big fangs and pointy tails and red skin and, and you know, running around with tridents. Um, no. Um, they look like Allison Mack. They look like uh, Barack Obama. They look like... Um, uh, and notice I didn't say they were. I said they look like. Um, they look like me. They look like... <laughs> right? They look like your next door neighbor. Um, they look like men in black robes on benches. We call them judges, um, but um, they're demons. Uh, and we've now been busting judges for selling these children into uh, CPS. That's another thing. Um, I'm sure, like, everybody watching this is preaching to the choir, but maybe you can show this to a friend or two um, where the, uh, you can show them that, no, uh, it's a fact that these judges, uh, that there have been more than a few judges selling children into slavery, basically, right? And that CPS, uh, that one, I can't remember her name at the moment because I'm under slight stress while I make this video, um, but I'll have a link below. Uh, she was going to expose CPS uh, because Child Protective Services is anything but Child Protective Services. They're selling these children into slavery. They're, um, how many children have gone missing in the uh, care of Child Protective Services. Just, ah, we don't know where he went. Don't, don't know what happened to him. He must have run away. Um, and then uh, this person was going to expose them and her and her husband are both found dead just before the release of the documentary and then the documentary never gets released. Um, somebody else needs to do a documentary. documentary. Uh, but the idea being that we have evidence all around this. All you have to do is look. It's everywhere. Uh, it's a sick society you're living in. Um, this is the simulation you've been... Okay, so what are you made of? What are you going to do? You're going to sit there silent? You're going to cower? You're going to be afraid? Uh, you're going to stand up? You're going to make some noise? Because I guarantee you, um, everybody, many of my friends think I'm out of my mind, right? He's lost it. Um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, they talk about the stages of death and dying. One of those stages is going to be angry. Eventually, uh, I mean, you're going to have anger. What are you, what are you uh, mourning? You're mourning the loss of your innocence. You're mourning the fact that you thought the United States was one thing, but it turns out to be another. You thought that these people um, who you voted for were one thing, but they turn out to be another. You thought that the people in these uh, various three-letter agencies were on your side, but actually they just are evil men that are in there for the money and could care less if the children are trafficked. Um, the FBI, DOJ, CIA, they all knew about the traffic. And again, don't tell me that Ron Paul didn't know about this. All those years in Washington, he didn't say boo about this, and he was somehow ignorant. Um, if he was, if I know about it and you know about it, uh, don't tell me that a person in that position didn't know about it. Um, served in Congress for years and years and years. Uh, they're all complicit, all of them. They all either know about it and your media has been turning a, a blind eye and in fact, not only turning a blind eye, but spiking stories and censoring any reporter that has the audacity to uh, bring, uh, you know, shed light on this topic. Um, you can start going back and uh, take a look at the Franklin Affair. Um, you can take a look, I mean, just all over the world. If you go to a country, Australia, United States, Canada, uh, England, Europe, there are all manners of story if you look. And, of course, they're swept under the rug. If they do manage to see the light of day, oh, that's just conspiracy theory. Oh, that's crazy talk. Meantime, out of the other side of their mouth, these guys will go Russia, 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 conclusion, conclusion. Uh, that it's come to its conclusion. But collusion, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. Uh, and, I mean, just grasp at straws. Meantime, the evidence for child trafficking, the evidence for human slavery, the evidence for what's going on is absolutely, in plain view, all you have to do is look. It's all around you. Um, again, I said bad news, and I've been kind of dancing around it. Um, I think we're in deep enough now. Uh, 2046. Uh, take a look at 2046. I came to it um, from one angle, uh, and uh, this guy, I'll put links down below, Diebold. I just put a link to his channel. He's got lots of video. Um, just watch them. They're little half-hour segments um, and see if you can poke holes in his basic theory, uh, which is there's polar shift coming. Um, 2046 is the year 
Um, 2046 is 27 years from now. Um, and the poles will shift. And we have all manner of scripture. I came to it that way. Uh, where I read Isaiah, read uh, the book of Enoch, read, uh, and it's always, oh, God punishes, and it's, uh, right, it's, uh, right, no, it's them telling you what happened. The earth shakes and trembles for like a day or two, not just for a little while. Um, why are all our mountain chains parallel to the equator, right? Or, excuse me, not parallel, perpendicular to the equator, right? Here's your equator, here's the mountain chains, because when that planet comes to a stop, uh, that planet being the one you're on, um, the sun stands still in the sky for about eight hours, and then it begins to turn the other way. And we have the Egyptians talking about this happening four times. So it's not an extinction event. It, uh, it sucks, but um, people survive it. And that, uh, oh my goodness, um, do a mind thought exercise. There, uh, the Earth stops, the planet that we're on, which is round, a globe. Um, the water will continue to move, um, causing huge floods. Oh, that's how all those huge stones get thrown around. Like, the only force on the planet is ice or water that can do that, right? Even nuclear bombs, even, even I mean, some of these things are just too huge. So, um, and why are they always covered in a layer of mud? Oh, because when the ocean comes and it retreat, re recedes, um, what's left? And why is there so much organic matter in some of the things that we find on other planets and in space, some of these particles and so forth? Because the side of the planet that fries, um, and then you get Boyle's Law for why you find the animals on the other side of the planet flash frozen and waves frozen in mid-break in Antarctica, uh, because uh, all of a sudden, uh, when you get compression, what happens when you get compression? Everything cools down probably cools down to like a hundred and, God, I don't even know, 170, 100 and more, more uh, instantaneously. So you have these animals in uh, Siberia, which was obviously on the other side of the planet um, when this happened. And all of these animals uh, have actual, uh, you know, flowers and flowers in their stomach. Um, flash frozen, right? You can even tell what kind of flowers they are. And got to understand that you need to understand the fact that these are animals that are designed to live in the cold. So if I shoot you right now, your digestion continues for quite a while, right? Your stomach acids don't just stop. But if uh, I flash freeze you after I shoot you, um, we're going to get a picture of uh, what's in your stomach, <laughs> right? So these animals, which have huge, thick hides, they're, they weigh a lot. Um, they have thick fur, right? These woolly mammoths, flash frozen. What could possibly cause them to flash freeze? Um, it would have to be one hell of an event. So, uh, do your own research. Uh, look up Micronova. It doesn't have to be a supernova. A Micronova. Um, just a right? Every 12,068 years, like clockwork, you are in a simulation, and that is the overlying... Um, what do I want uh, to call it? That is the... Uh, program that runs every 12,068 years, you get a flash from the sun. Um, and that flash fries planets that are nearby, uh, will knock off uh, in a small planet like Mars's, Mars, case of Mars, um, the atmosphere and uh, oceans get burned off. Um, space is nothing, it's not a vacuum, it's nothing like they tell you it is. Um, lots of oxygen and hydrogen molecules and we're going through that, along with a bunch of other stuff, uh, make no mistake. Um, sun milk. How do we get all this water on the planet? Oh, because when those cosmic rays hit an oxygen and a hydrogen, the two most abundant things in the universe, um, and the most abundant thing on this planet, uh, you get H2O. You might get O2, H2O2. You might get uh, heavy water. You might, but I mean, you're going to get uh, basically H2O, the most common thing. Uh, two oxygens. And, uh, excuse me, uh, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Uh, not two hydrogens and two oxygens. That's H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, which uh, your body makes in abundance, actually, but let's not go down that road. Let's just stick with um, H2O, which uh, will be burning off in huge amounts. The oceans will probably drop a few uh, hundred feet. And uh, you're going to see, like, massive tidal wave. You'll see one side suck out. Um, so the Atlantic coast 
where uh, you people are in New York and New Jersey, uh, the ocean is probably going to go dry. And if you take a look at underwater maps, the evidence is right in front of you. Obviously, it's drained down before. And then the other side of uh, uh, the planet, where which has oceans, and we have plenty. Go look at the plains. You can see it's happened before. Um, look at the maps and wide out, and it looks like the pan of a river delta, except it's all the southwest. Right? You can see how the water just uh, flowed over this planet and receded. Um, and they're always looking for an asteroid or instead of understanding that, nope, it's pretty much like clockwork every 12,068 years. And that's why they've screwed up our calendars and made it very difficult to do the math. Um, I had to meditate on this for hours and do, to find all kind of clues. And guess what? It was in the scripture. Um, and there are other people that have told you the same. And they talk about planetary alignments and this and that. But uh, no, they, the, the idea that, oh, the sun set over there. Now it rises over there. Oops. Um, the fact that the planet is uh, tilted by 20, because when you get blasted, uh, tilted by uh, 23 and so many degrees. Um, the fact that we can see that the polar shift is happening, the fact that we can see that the planet is, uh, the sun has cooled down quite a bit, and uh, because of that, we get more ions making it into, uh, because the magnetism goes down when there are fewer sunspots, um, we're heading for a minimum, we'll be heading back toward a maximum, that's not the end of the world, but it's going to get colder, there's a story about it, the global warming caused by humans, complete nonsense, uh, designed to throw you off the track, Again, 12 years of indoctrination and all the news media and songs and all social media and so forth to try to get you to believe that we humans are more responsible for what happens on this planet than the sun and uh, the universe that we're in. Uh, because we seem to be going into um, another part of the uh, galaxy that is uh, void. There's not as much stuff there. Um, what happens when we hit that? We don't know. Um, but it's not like we are, I mean, you know, just floating around in a vacuum. That's not how it works. We are trailing a sun that is careening around uh, the Milky Way, and uh, some parts are thicker and some parts are thinner. When the sun hits um, some of the parts that are, right, these uh, different environments that the sun is traveling through have effect on the sun um, and therefore have effect on us. And the sun, if it does micronova, and the chances that it's going to micronova, I mean, in a Talmud, they even tell you the date. <laughs> I mean, it's right there. Uh, 12,068 years. But they make sure that most of you don't, work, don't know where to look and uh, don't know when 12,068 ends, which, uh, jiving with our calendar, and man, that took a lot of jockeying, it turns out to be 2046. Because what year is this? This is 2019? From what? From some imaginary guy? Uh, walking the planet. Some of you believe that it was an actual person walking around, um, but then again, we still don't have a solid date, even if you do believe um, in the birth, you know, the virgin birth and so forth. Um, and it's fine. I mean, like, I'm not one of those. I'm a Christian, definitely. I believe in the Christ consciousness and accepting the Christ consciousness, but uh, the stories written in 325 by our uh, Lady of Grace, Constantine, and his, and then rewritten by the Mycenaeans and the King James's version and so forth of, of those scriptures. Um, not so much. But that doesn't mean you throw the baby out with the bathwater because in that book is contained all the stuff you need to set yourself free from these demons. See, there's another part of the puzzle. Um, because all of the, you need to understand the scripture and the cipher when it comes to law. Um, there's a cipher in there when it comes to physics. That's a lot of guys cracked that code and figured out 2046. Um, and then they tells you what happens, right? The sun, it, the planet is going to switch rotation. It spins this way and then it spins that way. Every 12,068 years, it spins this way and then it spins that way. Um, and then you have to make a distinction that, um, you know, west and sunset is not the same. Uh, there's an interesting passage, I'll see if I can find it again, I've been reading so much stuff, where they basically talk about the fact that, oh, you can no longer call it, um, it's no longer synonymous with sunrise in the West, you have to, um, you know, continue the sentence and say that um, that's where the sun used to rise, now it sets in the West. 
how interesting. And then talking about the sun standing still for eight hours, um, the sun appears to stand still. It's because the planet has stopped, right? And then it begins to turn the other way. And then when that happens, oh my, just think about what happens to the oceans. Um, the chance that those waves will be, it'll be like your bathtub, right? Swishing around in your bathtub. That's going to be probably a thousand to two thousand foot wave. Um, perhaps a thousand feet. A uh, thousand feet is two miles. Uh, this mountain right here <laughs> will be underwater, and that's a ten thousand foot mountain. Um, and there's going to be a lot of shaking going on as the as the uh, <sighs> Bible and many other scriptures talk about a full uh, like you think a few minutes of earthquake at nine point five is something. Wait till you've got like nine point five earthquake going on for hours. Um, just constant shaking as, uh, I mean, everything, the earth will liquefy, uh, buildings will crumble to the ground. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, this also seems to coincide with people starting to figure out, wait a minute, there's all these underground settlements. There's all that, right? And you know, your government is, um, building stuff across the United States. There's been all kinds of, uh, whistleblowers and others that have come forward, well, I guess they're all whistleblowers, but other people that um, are trying to get the truth out there, truth seekers and truth uh, tellers that have tried to tell you that the government, uh, they have a seed bank, right? Um, they have many uh, in Antarctica, uh, and Antarctica always seems to show up here in some of this uh, talk, but the idea that uh, there are many sounds coming from uh, beneath the earth and uh, grumblings and shaking and so forth all across the United States. Hmm, could there be underground tunneling going on or perhaps they're building down there or who knows what's going on? Um, certainly no one of any import will investigate and tell you the truth. Um, and they could investigate just to say, oh, well, uh, it's nothing, right? Maybe that maybe it's just natural causes. Uh, come up with a solution there, like, you know, there's settling or plates moving or earthquake or, 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 or volcanic activity, or who knows, um, or maybe there are actually people down there tunneling, or who knows what's going on, um, but no, no investigation. Oh, let's look at sports. Oh, let's look at what other ridiculous story they uh, put out there, but certainly they're not going to tell you the truth when it comes to this or anything else. Um, point being that there seems to be a large contingency of people in your government and religions that know that this is a 12,068 year cycle and have done everything they can to hide it from you. Uh, certainly they're not telling you about it in public school. Certainly they're not telling you on mainstream media. Certainly they're doing what they can to make anybody that says anything about it sound crazy. But yet you look at all the different disciplines, ice cores. And so what they've been looking for and what they tell you about is comets or meteors that hit the planet and cause problems, right? Um, what if it's a natural cycle of about 12,000 years? And about every 12,068 years, which seems to be the case, according to the guy at Diebold and according to a couple of other people, that uh, 12,000 is about the number, 12,068, a very specific number. Um, but about every 12,000 years, you get a reset. And this one, we have been under duress for, uh, oh, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 years now from these freaking demons that won't give us free energy, took away cannabis. Can you believe this? Took away one of our most healing plants. Um, it made you ignorant of your own body and how it works, physiology and basic biology. Um, wouldn't give you any kind of energy other than the kind that they can meter or extract from the earth and sell to you at ridiculous profits um, so that the few continue to gain and the many suffer. Um, because magnets, guys, just understand the most basic spin is what you need to make electricity. So if you can figure out how to get spin, um, falling water makes spin, <laughs> right? Um, uh, air can make spin, um, uh, but magnets can also make spin. Um, you can make spin on a bicycle, uh, but uh, all you need is spin. And once you figure out how to make spin, steam can make spin. So you got geothermal and so forth, but all you need to be able to do is spin. And uh, once you get spin, you get electricity. And see, um, the whole thing about um, the fact that it's an electric universe, it's a magneto electro un electric universe that is um, holographic in nature. 
it's a simulation that you're in. Uh, you're on the holodeck. And uh, let's think about this for just a little bit. Let's sit back and relax. Like I said, 27 years, you've got plenty of time to prepare. This is, uh, this is prepping on an extreme. So sit down and do some thought exercises. Where do you want to be? Uh, I don't think you want to be on the coast when this happens, unless, of course, you're ready to go for the harvest and just yeah, go home. Um, but if you want your DNA and yourself to survive, uh, and I'm going to be old by then, so hopefully I'm not here, um, but my children and my children's children are ready for what comes. Um, but there are plenty of places that have survived, obviously. Um, huge underground cities, uh, cavemen, as we called them, uh, that were dwelling in caves. Because, as I've said in other videos that I've made, living on the surface is a really bad place to be. <laughs> the surface of the planet is not where you want to be. Um, if you're a life form with some intelligence, uh, look around, uh, look up at night, and realize that, um, yeah, it looks all nice and calm right now, um, but, you know, when you have meteor showers and uh, other things as we pass through these belts twice a year, um, <sighs> might not be the best place to be on the surface. Just saying. Maybe you want to have a place, you want to come up here once in a while and, and uh, the awe of the sunset and the awe of, uh, you know, it's very beautiful on the surface. But uh, if you want to survive, maybe your buildings should be solid, earthquake-proof, and uh, underground where you are sheltered from the many things that can happen on the surface. Um, just saying. So the idea is that uh, you've got a 27-year head start, and um, if you want your DNA to survive, you better start making some plans. And uh, that beachfront property, it might not be where you want to be. And same thing, if you want to be in the mountains, uh, after hours and hours of shaking, uh, your um, preparations may have all come to naught. Um, so where do you want to be? And see, we need more research. What side of the planet will be facing the sun when this micronova happens? Not sure. Uh, looks like it was, um, it's hard to say, but if you take a globe, uh, looks like the North African plan uh, part of the planet, uh, it's still a desert after the last one. And, uh, the oceans, uh, flowing over the hard pan of Africa and wiping out what that guy shows to be Atlantis. I'll put a link down there. I never did make my Atlantis video. But um, uh, the Rico Formation, or whatever it's called, uh, I can't remember the name of it at the moment, again, because I'm making a video. If I wasn't making a video, I wouldn't, uh, I'd be able to recall the information easily. But anyway, I'll put the links down below, um, where there is a structure that very much fits uh, the Plato's description of what Atlantis should have been, or was, and it uh, looks like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how good your technology is, um, when this uh, micronova happens, everything comes to a halt. Um, they had, obviously, the technology to uh, build huge structures with uh, megaliths. They understood how to cut the rock and shape and form it and move it. And um, I believe Graham Hancock is a liar when he says, oh, it was just 18th century technology that they had. They were well ahead of us in many ways. And it's pretty clear from uh, some of the hieroglyphs in the Egyptian times that they had vehicles that could fly they didn't just uh, have ships, they could also fly. And they may have even been able to get off world. And some of the people, things that people see uh, when they see unidentified flying objects might be us, might be them, might be them from, uh, you know, coming back from travels. Who knows? I'm just speculating. But the idea that we've had the ability to get off the planet or get underneath the planet um, seems to me uh, is a no brainer. And the fact that we've been here for, you know, a lot longer than 6,000 years and a lot longer than 12. The Egyptians, like I said, they have four of these that they, that they talk about. Um, and they made fun of us for un only understanding that, you know, we, we know about one flood. Um, they talk about four floods. And, uh, yeah, when the planet stops and shifts direction, um, there's going to be some flooding. Uh, and there's also going to be some rain because when that happens, um, if there is a large solar flash and sephardic fire, it's talked about, in, uh, David Wilcock talks about it, but he doesn't talk about the micronova. Um, but he talks about how many places, um, this thing is mentioned where, uh, you know, you get a huge, uh, colors, lights in the sky. Ooh, Aurora Borealis, because the magnetosphere, uh, lights up when it gets hit by this, um, solar flash. Uh, or a huge CMA, uh, CME, that is, you know, all the way to 360, goes around the planet, you get a micronova. 
And uh, we have many, you can go look in the sky through your telescopes and you can see examples elsewhere of micronovas, not supernovas, micronovas. Um, there are many, many examples that you can look at. Looks like a thing that stars do. Uh, why would ours be any different? And uh, being that we have uh, the attention span and memory of gnats, 12,000 years is uh, very difficult for us to even preserve uh, information and pass on from generation to generation. Like, oh, by the way, every 12,000 years this happens. Um, so it's written about and, uh, you know, we want to pretend like it's fantasy and, oh, these silly, our silly ancestors trying to get us, they're trying to warn us about what happens every 12,068 years. Prepare. And then um, you can see that there are those, excuse me, who would much rather you not know about what happens um, and do everything they can to um, keep you in the dark and keep you uh, just pointing fingers at guys like me and poking fun, right? Oh, that guy's crazy. Um, 2046 kids that yeah, do some research, uh, watch some videos. It was out in plain view, by the way. Um, lots of stuff got burnt. Um, there are layers where uh, the only thing that can cause um, that kind of glass is high temperature. Um, so they were thinking, oh, they must have had nuclear weapons back in the day. Probably they did. Uh, many of the stories from the Vedas uh, make it sound like that was the case. But um, some of these areas are so huge that uh, can't just be nuclear weapons. And you look on, um, I mean, just, you know, huge layers of glass in the desert going for miles in every direction. Uh, hmm, that seems more like it got hit by a blast of sun, which uh, turned everything, vaporized everything in its path. Uh, including water, and then the water gets up in the atmosphere. Um, it gets pushed around Boyle's Law, once again, uh, to the other side, and now you've got all that water vapor. What's going to happen when it gets cold? It's going to turn into snow, and it's going to snow for like 40 years to get all of this water vapor out of the atmosphere and back down. And so um, you wind up with ice sheets and uh, snow drifts that are miles thick. And we've seen the evidence of this also. Uh, again, the ice core, it comes from all manner of disciplines. Ice core samples, um, anthropology, archaeology, uh, astrophysics. Um, astro, I mean, these guys that have uh, tried to make astrology into this cutesy tarot deck and fortune telling and so forth. No, that was marking time. That was the ancients. Uh, busting up these cycles and then giving them names so that you could remember the difference between what happens during Leo and Pisces and Aquarius and Sagittarius and so forth. And, uh, you know, they cut the pie into 12 pieces and gave each piece a name. Um, and it lasts, uh, one of these solar cycles, 12,068 years, two of these solar cycles, about 24,000 years, and then happens to do with the uh, procession of uh, the equinox which looks to be one degree every 72 years, 360 degrees, do the math, 25,000. <sighs> anyway, the idea being is that, um, let me just do the math. Uh, these cycles, you know, the big cycles, 12,000, 25,000, you know, 24,000. Uh, they're I mean, even just 2,000 years ago, most people, 4,000, 6,000, we can't, we can barely keep track of that much time because we only, you know, we have shortened life forms now. We have shortened lifespans. Uh, it appears from reading uh, much of the ancient scripture that uh, there was a time when we lived much longer than we do now. Um, but we have had some genetic tinkering go on by people that know how to uh, tinker with those genetics. And uh, longevity is no longer one of the things that we get. We get about 120 years. We get, uh, three score and 12, most common. But um, uh, 120 uh, you know, or you take the magic number 72, take half of that, add another 36 and 108. Oh, 108. That's an old human. Uh, 120, very, very old human, except for some of them. Uh, and we see that the ones that live long are the ones that have uh, huge amounts of nutrients every single day. Minerals being the most important of the nutrients uh, that you need to take in. Uh, and guess what? You can take them in through your hands and your feet. These people are in mineral-rich soil, and they seem to live longer. Um, and, of course, they uh, agrarian. They plant their own food. Uh, that food is mineral-rich uh, also, so they eat it. 
they're exposed to it uh, physically, their hands and their feet in the soil, uh, you know, because they're walking around barefoot most of the time, or even if they're walking around with slippers, they still get um, that uh, glacial milk and they drink it. Uh, the water is not uh, pristine and clear like what we drink. It's kind of milky because it's got all these uh, minerals in it. Um, and I'm talking about the people in Lake Titicaca, I'm talking about the people, I mean, all over the place, Hunza's and, and uh, Russia, and all, anywhere where they live a long time, where like 100 is common, um, it's always going to be a place where there are lots and lots of minerals. Um, and then they eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, and not just, uh, you know, meat and sugar, <laughs> not the bulk of their proteins and, and uh, carbohydrates. Um, but the idea being that uh, if you want to live for a long time, you've got to understand food magic and you need a lot of minerals. Um, anyhow, uh, the point being is that even with that, uh, at 100 years, uh, we forget. I mean, because 2,000 years, was like 20 generations, 20 humans, even if it's back to back. And that's not how it works. That'd be more like 40 generations in 2,000 years. Um, and 40 generations is a lot of generations, and we tend to forget what it was like. We don't even remember the fact that uh, it looks like the Egyptians had some form of electricity. Um, and it looks like uh, there were those that could move these huge megaliths that we can't even figure out how they cut them, how, I mean, none of this. And uh, we have no idea what the technology is, but of course our demons tell us, oh, you're the smartest thing ever, and you're the highest form that's ever been on the planet, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway... Um, and they skip the part about the, you know, the, the fact that uh, the genetic um, experiments are going on consistently. And if you want to know what part of the genetic experiment you're in, uh, you've got a unique code right there on your finger. And uh, many of the other animals do not have this unique code. Um, you might want to look into that. Uh, and the idea being that you need to know your blood type and this code, and you'll know what part of genetic what genetic experiment you're in. Um, and it's all going to get reset here shortly anyway, which is why they don't care about uh, raping the planet when it comes to oil and timber and, 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 and the soils and so forth, because it's all going to get turned, literally, get turned upside down here shortly. And um, the seven billion of us on the planet, there's not going to be seven billion of us this time that survive. Um, there's going to be a massive harvest and see what happens in the next part of the simulation will be a direct result of how well you did in this part of the simulation. Um, so where, where do you want to be? Maybe you don't want to have your DNA survive. Maybe um, you don't want to have children. Maybe you want to have lots of children because and you want to have them in the next say seven years because you don't want these children to be babies when uh, 2046 rolls around because that's going to be one more mouth to feed that doesn't put anything back into the uh, system because babies and young children need education, need food, need care, etc. Um, by the time they hit 18, 19, 20, um, that's uh, their, yes, it's another mouth to feed, but um, they can garden, they can, right, they can grow things, they can work, they can be uh, gainful and useful. Um, any um, family will tell you and all the rich families they have lots and lots of children they don't just have one or two they have lots of children now take a look at what's happened to J japan and china now that their demographics are fucked because they uh, bought the lie that having fewer children was a good thing instead of understanding that um the more of us there are the bigger the pie is it was a lie that um the more of us there are the less pie there is for everybody no because unless you're a complete useless husk um, you're going to produce more than you uh, take. Uh, that's the first law of nature and abundance. Uh, you take abundance from abundance and abundance remains. And you add to that abundance. Um, farmers, the more farmers there are, there's more food than you know what to do with. Um, the fact that it takes, uh, what is it, nine calories in to get one calorie out of chicken? Not a problem because there's an abundance of calories. Right? There's, there's all kinds of chicken. And if you had uh, hemp, you would be able to feed these animals easily. Right? And they got you screwed up in that thinking when it comes to understanding that, um, no, um, life eats life, period. Um, whether it's uh, green growing life or whether it's uh, bread and you're eating uh, yeast, which are alive. Um, I've gotten into uh, all manner of this uh, <laughs> uh, cultivating bacteria. Uh, yeast is one of them. Um, the different kinds of kefir, uh, kefir, 
uh, are, I mean, I'm making water kefir that's blow your mind, so delicious, um, and very good for you, probiotics and so forth, feed them the sugar, and then you eat what they uh, give you, which is probiotics and B vitamins, and it's delicious on top of everything else, and you can kefir uh, sugar and water, you can kefir coconut water, you can kefir, um, uh, which is crazy delicious, by the way, um, and you can kefir uh, milk products from goats or cows. Uh, using a very different kind of kefir grain, which is a milk kefir grain. But these are just uh, bacteria um, that have uh, formed colonies that we can cultivate and use. And then, of course, there's yeast, right? Sourdoughs and so forth, where they uh, help you eat the carbohydrates. Um, and see, so you want them out of there, not in you, because once you get too much yeast in your body, uh, that's not good for you. Candida and so forth is a, is a thing. And uh, humans have figured out, uh, it took them a while to figure it out, but uh, sugar, sugar, not good for you. Um, and uh, it causes an overgrowth in uh, unfriendly flora. Anyhow, um, the point being uh, to all of this is that uh, we have a massive reset coming. Um, you need to start understanding, uh, take a look at free energy, right? <laughs> and uh, okay, that's going to be the number one thing. You're going to like your electricity. Um, no one of you can build uh anything that we've come to, to take for granted. Um, the computer that you're watching this on, the device that you have, if you have 30 engineers, they're not going to be able to uh, replicate this. You need, I mean, think about how interconnected all of this is. Um, and a lot of that uh, is going to get wiped out in a day uh, when comes uh, the polar shift and this micronova. Um, and I think that Jesus said, uh, if you're on the roof when this happens, you won't have time to get off the roof. Right? <laughs> you don't have time. Don't bother. Just look up and smile and enjoy the lights because um, by the time it, you get off the roof, it's that you're done. Um, the idea that uh, this doesn't happen, eh, prove it. <laughs> it's a lot easier to prove that it does happen than that it's never happened. Uh, this is, you know, so take the other side of the, the argument and uh, go to town. And I think the more you try to disprove, the more you're going to find out, oops, um, every 12,068 years or so, uh, we get this reset and there's not a damn, aliens aren't going to come and save you. <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and see, they know that uh, every 12,000 years, the cycle continues like this. And this has been going on for, oh, geez, by some estimates, 270 million years. Um, so basically in 144,000 years, 12 resets, uh, 12 cycles of the sun. Um, so then multiply and then you start getting into the fun of the numbers. Um, but that means every million years, wow, that's thousands of resets, right? <laughs> that's thousands of times we scurgle out of the mud, <laughs> scurgle out of the mud. <laughs> um, it's coming. Uh, it's and there's no way around it. And uh, don't get depressed. Get happy because you've got a 27 year head start on other people. Uh, if you're watching this, um, and I'll get into more of this in future videos about uh, the dates and how uh, you come to the dates. But I'll just put links and do your own damn research, and you'll start to see that yeah, this is this is the case, kids. Um, Let's see, so I covered that. I covered the fact that we've got demons running the show, and that's why uh, you're ignorant of the reset, because they don't want you knowing about this. And uh, they've set up a system that makes it so that they milk you right up until the last day, and they want to see um, what happens with their, with their uh, genetic experiments, of which you are unwittingly a part. Um, and then I could talk about gematria. Do I want to talk about that? The fact that uh, the word and the number is uh, mixed and there seems to be a few people who have cracked this code and started to figure out, wait a minute, you can, you, you can use it to crack the uh, sports events, politics, all major, right? Because it's your spelling. You're basically, when you speak this language, um, why do they call it a cursor again? And uh, why do they call it cursive writing? And uh, what does curse mean? They think these are all just coincidences. And the fact that you're spelling and the fact that um, language creates reality, uh, it also creates your perception of reality. Um, the fact that you are unable to perceive reality except with these, uh, this, right? Five sentences, five, five senses um, 
if you can grasp something, if you can hold it in your hand, a lot of people have a much easier time understanding uh, whatever that is. When it comes to, say, mathematics, for example, using manipulatives uh, makes it easier for people to grasp the ideas um, and explain, and then be able to use symbols to explain uh, what it is they have in their hands. Um, but, I mean, it works that way for many other things, too, not just, uh, I mean, even if you're doing writing, if you can pick up the words and put them in, in uh, sentences, children can understand uh, the parts of grammar much more easily um, than if they're just writing, because you can literally pick up a clause and move it here, or pick up a verb and move it there, subject, verb, object, etc. Anyway, but the idea that you uh, speak, and uh, we all agree on this reality trillions of times a second, uh, once you begin to understand the gematria, and once you begin to understand that it's all boiling down to mathematics, um, the perception of reality changes, um, for the better, I hope. But the idea that you can understand this, and that uh, it, it, meditate, just meditate, and you'll start to see that there is a whole lot more going on here than they lead you to believe. Uh, very clearly, um, this isn't it, and many of you have figured out that this isn't it, and many of you have figured out that, oh, football's rigged, or sports seems to be rigged, but you can't figure out how. And uh, same thing with uh, politics and so forth. They seem to give you riddles and clues and so forth, and it has to do with numbers, and really, the uh, what happened on 9-11, and what does 9-11 mean to us? Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk about briefly. <sighs> August 11 it looks like is going to be the next fun date. Um, probably something happens in San Francisco. Looks like something is going to happen either to one of the bridges. Something's going to happen in San Francisco, August 11th. Um, stay the fuck off the bridges in San Francisco in August. Uh, or August 11th, that one day. Um, just uh, understand that uh, traffic is going to snarl and there's probably going to be some problems on August 11th. Um, just saying. Not September. Not October, but August this year. And it's going to be 8-11 instead of 9-11. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August 11th. Right? Not September. Um, and there's uh, gematria for this. There seems to be some uh, more. And I'll just put some videos down below. Um, and that's the easiest thing to do. Okay, I think that'll pretty much cover it, Crime Stoppers. I've been rambling on here for a while. I'm sure there's some things I forgot to cover. Um, when it comes to Trump and the news, uh, things are happening. Things are starting to happen rapidly. Uh, they lost their narrative, and uh, now you will see the other guys, uh, the quote-unquote good guys, and like I said, ain't no good guys in this fight. Um take their revenge on the treasonous bastards that uh, tried to stop him from being president. And again, why are they doing this? Oh, because of all the traffic. Why are they doing this? Because uh, the demons do not want to be exposed for what they're doing. Um, and what they're doing is horrific and, 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 and. But they'd rather be uh, taken down for treason, or they'd rather be taken down for uh, messing with Trump or the elections or politics or whatever then be exposed for the pedophiles because that they are, because they know that uh, even in our screwed up court systems, if you uh, are uh, attacking like parents that are protecting their children from pedophiles, uh, fathers that uh, wind up accidentally uh, or inadvertently beating uh, men to death that have uh, raped their young daughters, um, no jury convicts them. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's a man's prerogative to protect his children. And uh, it's our prerogative to uh, be able to protect the weak, the weakest among us. Um, it's very simple, my friends. Um, it is the responsibility of the strong to protect the weak. And the weakest among us are babies who cannot protect themselves. And for us to allow these demons and others, uh, maybe they're not demons, maybe they're just evil men, that, uh, which makes them demons, um, that would rape children, uh, harvest their organs, uh, film them while they scream and cry as they're being sexually assaulted and raped, uh, and then make money off of that to the other sick fucks that enjoy this. Um, they need killing. It's as simple as that. They don't need jailing. They don't need therapy. It's not a uh, proclivity or a preference. It's not uh, something that they can help. It's something, or they can't help. 
it's something that needs to be put to an end and uh, brought to the surface and cleansed. And uh, we need to do this stuff within the next, say, 27 years because... Uh, can you see now why they don't care about um, oil and gas drilling offshore? And uh, uh, they've made it so that there's going to be quite a few people that are very unhappy because uh, where are all of our nuclear power plants and so forth that are going to get swept away and buried and God knows, you know, you'll find radiation here and there um, in the next generations. Uh, uh, well, yep, they're on the ocean, right? Where's San Onofre? Where's Fukushima? Where's, I mean, just look at all the different nuclear power plants that are next to rivers and lakes and, and uh, oceans. And then understand that uh, this time around, um, we're going to have a rather uh, radioactive planet uh, because a lot of these uh, power plants are going to be destroyed in the coming cataclysm. And uh, we will need the information or the technology to be able to neutralize some of this stuff, which apparently we have. If you look at Brown's gas and a few other things. Um, they say that it's impossible for us to increase the half-life speed and thus make the products or the uh, different uh, radioactive isotopes inert. But uh, it looks like uh, some of the things that I've seen, that this is actually the case, that you can actually... Um, use technology to make radio, radio, radioactive uh, isotopes inert uh, much faster than their half-lives. Um, that's yet more research and probably something that we're going to need to know about going forward because, uh, like I said, when these tidal waves, when they're not tidal waves, when these, when these earth changes happen, uh, these power plants are going to be uh, spread out and, I mean, smushed, <laughs> literally. Uh, hopefully buried, but also um, a lot of the radioactive waste and so forth. And we have no ability to, um, without machines, uh, Geiger counters and such, um, all we feel is a little warmth, maybe. Uh, maybe. But um, we don't, we are not wired to protect ourselves from radiation. Um, so many times, like, you know, there's stories about people in Russia and other places um, huddling in warm places uh, because it felt warm. And then it turned out that um, the reason why it was warm is because it was radioactive. And, uh, you know, because, you know, in the former Soviet Union and, and China and a couple other places, they just, you know, dump the radioactive material out in the middle of nowhere and uh, don't even properly label it or anything. So people way out in the wilderness um, think they're, they're, you know, sheltering uh, in warmth. And then, you know, they wind up with radiation sickness and uh, God. Uh, just horrifying uh, death that way um, because they're, they've been rendered uh, internally by uh, the radiation uh, without getting into too much detail. But the idea being is that um, even small doses in your airports, you don't want that. I'm just saying. Um, they always try to tell you, oh, no, don't worry. It doesn't... Uh, these backscatter radiation, it's, it's all safe and yeah, no. Uh, literally rends your DNA. Um, and, and just, you know, small amounts of that, it just is as perhaps you want to avoid this, uh, exposing yourself to it. And then same thing with air travel, because now we have uh, screwed the pooch to the point where um, taking an airline flight in the United States is basically the same thing as getting two x-rays, uh, what did I say, two dental, two full dental x-rays, where the thing sweeps around your head. Um, two of those, the amount of radiation you're exposed to every time you take a flight, uh, which is why you're seeing flight attendants dropping dead of heart attacks. Uh, that's something they're not talking much about um, because people are not making the, the connection. And also, if you take a look at your pilot friends and your uh, flight attendant friends, take a look at their aging. Uh, do they seem to be aging more rapidly uh, than you might expect? Just saying, might be something you observe. Okay, I think that's it, Crime Stoppers. Um, silver and gold it's, can't stay where they are forever, especially silver at 15, 14, 15 bucks. Buy that stuff. It is absolutely. Um, we, I mean, if it goes lower, buy more. But uh, 14, 15 bucks, the, the name of this game is buy low, sell high, and you're going to be able to sell it for more than 15 bucks here in the future. Um, 
but you might want to change your plans when it comes to wealth accumulation if you understand and uh, believe and uh, do your research into what happens in 2046. Um, he who has that biggest pile of paper uh, is a fool. Uh, what you're going to want is material assets and um, creature comforts like food <laughs> and the ability to generate electricity and so on. Uh, solar panels might be good for this. Um, because the sun will still be shining the next day, um, but it's just protecting them. But I'm telling you, uh, take a look at the research. It's uh, not looking like this is a joke or some kind of end-of-the-world contrivance. And again, it's not the end of the world. We've survived this numerous times. It just depends uh, where you are on the planet when it hits. Um, because if you're on the side, oops, if you're on the side of the, uh, look, it got dark while I was doing this. Holy cow, there is a crazy, beautiful sunset going on while I'm uh, blathering over here. I think I'm going to go outside and take a few pictures of it. Maui sunset. Um, but the idea is that uh, prepare yourselves, educate self, educate others, and uh, be of good cheer. Good things are happening. Uh, you can be part of this. Right? There's only one person responsible for you, and that's you. Um, but uh, do your research and figure out, is this guy crazy or uh, did he stumble across some information that perhaps I need to be privy to? Uh, I will put information below. Uh, make your own um, judgment call, <laughs> as it is, or as it were. Uh, and I'll make another video talking about our Lady of Grace, Trump, and how he is enemy of your enemy, but not necessarily your friend. Um, coming up. But the idea being that um, if these people don't take action and start putting some of these child rapers, I mean, they can get Assange, then why can't they get some of these child rapers? They are, but I mean, the big guys, the ones that you've heard of, the names that you're familiar with, the faces that you've seen on TV, they are, in fact, involved. Okay, Crime Stoppers, e pluribus unum, and I'll talk to you soon.